The attack on free speech should concern everyone. Months before the 2020 presidential election, I remember noticing an uptick of content creators that were dealing with their Twitter accounts being suspended or their YouTube and Facebook accounts being demonetized for reasons that were unclear. Now, I would have just shrugged this off as an intern not doing their job properly, but then I started to notice a pattern. Not only was this happening more frequently leading up to the election, it was happening primarily to conservative, right-leaning, or non-progressive creators. Of course, many leftists were foaming at the mouth just knowing that a YouTuber they hated couldn't earn a living or run their business properly. How humane of you. But I saw these acts for what they really were, a preview of what's happening right now. Hi, my name is Gothix, and today we're talking about big tech censorship and why you should be very concerned. When I discuss this topic with a leftist, I typically get the same response. Twitter is a private company and they can do whatever they want. Great. Cool. Let me dissect why that is a terrible way to look at it. If I'm being honest, I used to believe the same crap before I fully understood the magnitude of problems that result from online censorship, or more specifically, biased censorship. Let me explain. I haven't subscribed to cable TV in years. Most of the content I consume comes from the internet. Now, let's take it a step further. I have a slight social media addiction. Okay, maybe a, maybe more than a slight, but I know if left to my own devices, I could easily waste a few hours a day scrolling through Twitter. That being said, we have to assume that there are millions of other people just like me who consume mostly online content. Now, let's get one thing straight. The main goal of these big tech platforms is to keep you coming back because that's how they make their ad revenue. They achieve this by allowing the algorithm to push content on your feed that you're more likely to click on. You like cats? Well, the algorithm might give you more cat videos. You like makeup? You might get some recommended beauty products. In these cases, the algorithm seems harmless, but in more serious topics such as a presidential election, the algorithm can create problems. For example, if you're irritated that Trump refused to condemn white supremacy, the algorithm might show you articles that also criticized his inability to condemn it during the debate. Perhaps you believe that Trump voters are extremists because they're responsible for storming the Capitol. Well, in that case, you might get more videos or articles covering the armed insurrection that happened in D.C. Now, remember what I said earlier. The goal of social media is to keep you coming back to their platform. The easiest way for them to do this is to continue promoting content that feeds into your confirmation bias. If you hate Trump, for example, they're not going to promote a video that puts him in a positive light because it's something that you're less likely to click on. That being said, every now and then you might come across content on your timeline that doesn't feed into your confirmation bias, effectively breaking through that algorithm. From a business perspective, this is a problem because you can't earn money if people don't engage with the content that you're promoting them. And from a more sinister standpoint, you can't sway public opinion if someone else is challenging your narrative. So, are you still with me? Let's go back to the original observation about the uptick of conservative or right-leaning creators getting suspended or demonetized. Why would they do that? Well, as I just explained, the algorithm isn't perfect. So in my opinion, when big tech does this to me, it seems like they're thinning out the marketplace of information by discouraging creators from uploading or banning them altogether. Up until recently, this would have been considered a conspiracy theory. Your platform restricts speech. Our platform promotes speech unless people violate our rules. And in a specific direction in any direction. But uncle, oh, I don't wanna say his name. The guy who calls for death gets a suspension. The guy who insinuates death gets a permanent ban. But Tim, you're, you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. And I feel like you're doing it deliberately. It's not about one particular thing. It's about a pattern and practice of violating And you rules. have a pattern and practice of banning only one faction of people. I don't agree Quillette with that. recently you... published an article where they looked at 22 high profile bannings from 2015 and found 21 of them were only on one side of the cultural debate. But I don't look at the political spectrum of people when I'm looking at their tweets. Right, you, you have a bias. I don't know who they are. You're biased and you're, you're targeting specific individuals because your rules support this perspective. No. 
But of course, Twitter isn't biased with who they decide to censor. I mean, Twitter's own PR executive told us that they don't do this, so it must be true. A small team gathered from Trust and Safety. We were discussing um, the potential for violence to happen, and we decided to uh, escalate our enforcement of the civic integrity policy and use um, a label that disabled engagements um, to stop the spread of potentially inflammatory um, content, which is the content around uh, election interference, election fraud, stealing the election, um, that type of thing. We are going to conspiracy theories. We are going to be permanently suspending those accounts. So let me get this straight. By your logic, questioning the integrity of the election process is considered harmful and inflammatory. Yes, because I totally did not just see a video of a woman getting hauled off to jail because of voter fraud. Raquel or Rachel Rodriguez was arrested today. For voter fraud, illegal voting, unlawfully assisting people to vote by mail, and illegally possessing an official ballot. Rodriguez was charged based on hidden camera video recorded last fall by the conservative activist group Project Veritas. That totally didn't happen. Didn't see it. Doesn't exist. I mean, just look at what Uganda recently did by ordering their internet service providers to block Twitter specifically because they didn't want the platform to influence their own election. Let's dive a little bit deeper and look at the situation revolving Parler, an unbiased social media platform that promotes free expression without violence and no censorship. If you ask most leftists what Parler is, they'll most likely say something like, it's a right wing conservative platform. And while yes, there are a lot of conservatives on there, Parler's main focus is, or was, free speech. After the Capitol incident in DC, Amazon, Apple, and Google all band together to get Parler off the internet for being a platform filled with misinformation, baseless allegations of voter fraud, and a centralized hub to promote hate. Oh! Hold on, that's the, that's the wrong platform. Let me just scrub that off really quick. Oh! But in all seriousness, what happened to Parler is now being directed to other free speech platforms, such as Minds, which by the way, I highly recommend. In my opinion, the goal was never to silence just Trump supporters, but rather silence anyone who questions or challenges whatever mainstream narratives are out there. Having free speech allows you to do that and is also the first line of defense against a tyrannical government. Sure, censorship could prevent some idiot from calling you a twat on Twitter, but it could prevent someone from relaying valid information that could protect your well-being. But perhaps you're still watching this shaking your head in disgust that some random YouTuber would suggest there's a a sinister motive behind private companies cherry picking what content they allow on their platform. Don't worry, I got something else for you. Take a look. And second, we have to turn down the capability of these conservative influencers to reach these huge audiences. There are, are people on YouTube, for example, that have a larger, daytime, a larger audience than daytime CNN, and they are extremely radical and pushing extremely uh, radical views. And so it's up to the Facebooks and YouTubes in particular to think about whether or not they want to be effectively cable networks for disinformation. And then we're going to have to figure out the OANN and Newsmax problem. You know, that these companies have freedom of speech, but I'm not sure we need Verizon, AT&T, Comcast and such to be bringing them into tens of millions of homes. Um, I, I, this is, you know, allowing people to seek out information if they really want to, but not pushing it into their faces, I think is where we're gonna have to go here. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned how some content creators and independent journalists have been able to break through the algorithm, thus providing content that contradicts the end user's confirmation bias. This man just suggested that YouTube should turn down the capability of conservative influencers and services like AT&T or Comcast should stop broadcasting smaller news networks like OA 
UANN and Newsmax for what they deem extremist content. In my opinion, if you need to censor people in order for your narrative to stand on its own two feet, then your narrative wasn't strong enough to begin with. It's the same criticism that I have for those who comment on my videos and complain about my wrong opinion in terms of, for example, rejecting the concept of white privilege. I just want the freedom to express my position as openly as someone else who's on the opposite end of my position. Let the public decide for themselves which opinion they like better. Give them options. And in the context of conspiracy theories, allow the public the opportunity to consume all related content before drawing their own conclusions, not ones that are spoon-fed to them. The attack on free speech affects us all, regardless of who you voted for. Just ask current residents of Hong Kong what they think of the national security law. You can't question or speak against the government, let alone accurately report the news without being arrested. And to think that something like that could never happen here tells me that America has been way too comfortable living in its safe space. So to sum it all up, if big tech is censoring a particular demographic and mainstream media wants to censor that same demographic, all that's really left is you, the people, relying on cancel culture to make opinions that you don't like disappear. Now, let me just say, this isn't about right versus left. This is not about progressives versus conservatives. The more divided we are as a country, the less opportunities there are to exchange information that could potentially sway someone's opinion. And if your hate for the other side is so strong to the point that you find yourself celebrating censorship, a word of caution. The censorship revolving Trump conservatives and independent journalists are just the opening act but you my fellow americans are the main event and that's the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want more content like this and also a huge thanks and shout out to my subscribe star members for sponsoring another video my name is gothics and i'll see you on the flip side